Hi, George here. And today we're going to be changing the sky in here, going from this to this. I think that's a much nicer looking sky. And we'll be doing this here inside of Affinity Photo 2.6 using the new object selection tool over here. Now this is just one simple project here in Affinity Photo. You can do loads more with Affinity Photo. A lot of stuff I never cover here on my YouTube channel. So if you want to learn everything about Affinity Photo, the best way to do that is with my complete training course. And it covers the whole program, including all of the different personas. And I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Check that out once you finish the video. Okay, let's just start off here. I'm going to delete all of these background layers in here. There we go. Back to the original layer right there. Here's our original photo. Now the basic concept behind changing the sky is easy. You first select the sky. You then invert that so your foreground is selected. And then you hide the sky with a layer mask. You can then put anything you want in behind that layer and that gives you your new sky. So it's a fairly easy, straightforward process. Now we'll be doing this again, going over here and using the new object selection tool. Now when you first start this tool, it's going to analyze your picture. It's that kind of little clock icon. Wait until that changes. So it's analyzing the picture right now. It's figuring out where everything is. That's the first process. There we go. It's got it all figured out. We can now come in here and scroll around the different areas of your picture and it will show you the different spots or different areas that Affinity Photo has found. And in this case, there's the sky. If you want to make this a selection, just click at that point. It will then go through and make it a selection. There we go. Now the sky is selected. We don't want that. We want the opposite of that. We want everything but the sky selected. So go up here to select and come down to invert pixel selection. Or you can always use the keyboard shortcut of control shift I. There we go. Now we want to refine the edge. Notice that we're getting some sky in here behind the hair. Some sky up here, a little bit of sky over here. We can fix all of that with the refine tool. Load that up. And we're seeing an overlay right here. You can use overlay, black, matte, white, matte, black and white, or transparent. I like the overlay. It's kind of a red coloration. It makes it really easy to see. And all we need to do here is just to brush into the areas that have some of that blue showing. Now, since we're replacing a sky with a sky, you don't have to be absolutely perfect on this. Any little bit of blue that's left is just going to blend right into the new sky. So this gets rid of most of that and then we'll be okay. Got some down here. Now it's a bit tricky. Sometimes you have to paint in like this and hope that it catches those inside things. But Affinity Photo is actually very good at that. Some programs are not so good at this little trick here, painting in from the outside to get internal areas. But Affinity Photo really is great at doing that little trick. Okay, let's get the tops of the trees down here. Notice how I'm doing this in just little strokes and letting Affinity Photo go in and figure it out each time. I find it works better this way if you do it this way. All right, now over here we have some trees with a lot of sky behind them. So it's the same exact thing, just like the hair. It's working with several strokes from the outside until it catches that. Okay, let's come down here. And we're just about done. There we go. Okay, that looks good. We now can convert this into a selection or a layer mask. Since I'm sitting on the background layer right now, I want to keep this protected. So what I'll do is to choose a new layer with a mask and then apply. And then our background layer becomes our protection layer. I can sure hide that right here. There you go. And here's our icon just showed up. So that's all taken care of. We now can bring in our new sky. Let's go down here to the background layer. So select your background layer and then bring in a new file. You can use whatever technique you want to on this. The two standard ways are to either place your new image in here and they'll come in at a reduced size potentially depending upon the resolution of your pictures or you can open it up and drag and drop. Now place is easy. I'll show you both. Just find your picture. Here's some of the pictures that I've used in my training here. There's the sky. Open up. Get a placement tool. Click in here any old spot like that. Make sure you're on that layer. And you can then move that around wherever you want. I'll just put it right down here. Let's stretch this out to make it larger. And that worked out pretty well. There's that new background. Let's see, I wanted to do this in a different manner. I'll hide this layer. Let's do the drag and drop technique this time. File, open. Same thing, we'll find that picture, which is right there, and open. Comes in as a new file. I'll just float that window down here. Then all you have to do is grab the background of this file, drag it over to this file, and there's that new image. Now, one thing about this, if you do the drag and drop method, this layer will come in locked. See that lock icon right here? So you have to unlock this layer. If you don't, you're going to be dragging or moving a different layer like that. 
So you have to unlock this layer. There you go, it's now unlocked. You now click on that and then move that around. Of course, we're in front and not behind, so just take this and drag it down beneath the horse layer. At that point, same thing. There you go. You may want to use one or the other technique. It really depends upon what else you're doing in your image. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn everything about how to use Affinity Photo, the best way to do that is by grabbing my Affinity Photo course. It's an online video course. covers all the tools, all the menus, all the personas, all the panels, everything. And I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and give me a like for this video. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe as well. I have a lot more videos coming up and I'll see you next time.